Where does Colin Cowherd have the Saints finishing in the NFC South? So Colin has done his post-draft divisional prediction. So he's done the standings for each division. We are only going to watch the NFC South because I want to see where he has the Falcons and the Saints. I have a sneaky feeling I know where he has the Falcons, but I'm interested to see where he has our beloved Saints. So I've drawn the line in the sand here. I've said that I think people are overrating the Falcons. I think the Falcons are much improved. I think Kirk Cousins is good. I think Kirk Cousins is much better than Desmond Ritter. But the fact of the matter is the Falcons were, or the Falcons had, the worst or the easiest schedule possible. The easiest schedule in maybe NFL history. And what did they do with it? They won seven games. So I understand that Desmond Ritter was bad. I understand that Taylor Heineke was bad. But to think Kirk Cousins is going to come in and elevate that team three, four wins into where they're just a no doubt about it, easy 11-win, 10-win team, blows my mind. The Saints had a down year last year, for sure. The Saints had a a down year. They had a lot of issues with the offensive uh, coaching staff. They fixed that, seemingly. And here's the fact of the matter, too. The Saints had an easy schedule last year, comparable or comparable, as some of my friends would say, with the Falcons. And the Saints won nine games. So the Saints are much closer to the goal than the Falcons. And I don't think the rosters are too different. So let's see if Colin agrees or disagrees. Let's go to the NFC South. I think it's a slam dunk. I think Atlanta's going to win this division. Tampa's going to be feisty. But we're going to forget about the Kirk Cousins, Mike. Okay, so well, I'll, I'll let him keep going. Cool panics drama. This is a really good football team offensively. Raheem Morris, Shark Cat. Okay, all right. So why? Like this is a really good team offensively. Why? What do you mean? Because last year we didn't see any of it. So you're telling me that Kirk Cousins is going to come in there and fix everything that was wrong with this team. Kirk Cousins is going to play defense. Kirk Cousins is going to do everything. He's going to coach. Because all I see is a offensive coordinator who has never been an offensive coordinator. I see a coach who has been a who has previously failed as a head coach. So why do I why just because of Kirk Cousins? Because the only thing they've done besides draft their future franchise quarterback and Michael Penix, but the only thing they've really done is get Kirk Cousins. So getting a 36 year old or 38 year old, whatever he is, I think 36, 36 year old quarterback for $150 million guaranteed off of an Achilles injury, with that being the only thing you're doing, I sure am seeing a whole lot of people say, hey, go ahead and pencil in the Falcons to win the division. If you told me that the Falcons won three more games than they did last year, I would say, yeah, okay, that's probably about right. And that's only 10 wins. So unless the Buccaneers and the Saints, the Panthers will be bad, but unless the Buccaneers and the Saints are really, really bad, If your division winner is 10 wins, it's going to be close. It's going to be a dogfight. It's not going to be a slam dunk. Even if the Saints win eight games, right? The Saints' season win total is somewhere around seven and a half. So let's say the Saints win eight games or nine games, and the Falcons win nine games or 10 games. That's right there. Like, that's a competitive division. So this this notion that they're like a runaway freight train team, uh, the Falcons, I just don't see it. Tampa's two, and again, I think it'll be a feisty uh, battle. Uh, Tampa also had a great draft. Their first four picks, all really nice players. I'm going to do... I think Tampa take, takes a step back. I think Tampa was fortunate last year. I think Mayfield played above his head. I think you could see some regression. Even if you don't see any regression, you're still talking about a 500 team. 500 is the ultimate like razor's edge when it comes to standings because if you're 9-8, and eight, there's a that's a huge difference between nine and eight and eight and nine, right? Like, like just the perception, just how it, how it, how the standings look, how a team looks, how a season looks. So just a couple of games here and there, when you're on that razor's edge, can can win you a division. And last year, the Bucks that, that won the Bucks the division. I always point to the Green Bay game for the Saints. We're up. 17 nothing. Derek Carr goes down. We end up losing the game. We don't score another point. If Derek Carr stays healthy, I believe we win that game. That one game flips the Saints from being a 9-win team with a disappointing season to we could have been a 10-win team division champion. And I have a sneaky feeling if we were a 10-win New Orleans Saints team, division champ, defending division champion, 
Colin wouldn't have us drop from first, second. He wouldn't have us third or fourth. Carolina third. I'm with J-Mac. I think. What? What? Carolina third? What? What did? What? What did we see last year from Bryce Young? I must. I mean, I, what did we see from Carolina that makes that makes anyone think that they could possibly take a step forward? And speaking of Carolina, uh, Canales, the coach leaving Tampa Bay, huge deal. The, this is blowing my mind. I think they finally got Bryce Young some weapons. I, I think they're going to make a surge next year. I don't like right now New Orleans' situation. I just don't feel good about it. I'm going to have the Saints fourth. Uh, maybe they're third, but I just don't like the way it feels right now. I'm not sure that coach is going to be there next year by Thanksgiving. Uh, finally, another really, really... What's the situation? That's all he's going to tell me? Some weapons. I, I think they're going to make a surge. Who are, who are the weapons? Who are the weapons that they that they got Bryce Young? Who are we talking about? So he, so that was so you're telling me that you you have the Panthers at third because you like the weapons they got Bryce Young. I, I got to hear this again. Nice players. I'm gonna do Carolina third. I'm with J Mac. I think they finally got Bryce Young some weapons. I, I think finally got Bryce Young some weapons. They're gonna make a surge next year. I don't like right now New Orleans situation. What is the situation? This, this, I'll tell you what this is right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is a guy who has absolutely no clue what is going on in Carolina or New Orleans. That, that I can 100% guarantee you that's what this is. That's the, that's what that's my face that I'm making listening to this. I mean, that, that's all this is, is, is he's telling on himself. There's no way you can watch the NFC South Watch the Panthers, watch the Bucks, watch the Saints, watch the Falcons. And you can't sit there and say, yeah, I think the Panthers got some weapons. Uh, I think the Panthers are going to make a surge, and I just don't like what the Saints have going on. All right, next segment. Like, what does that mean? I don't like what the Saints have going on? What Can you elaborate? Because the Saints have virtually the same roster as last year. They fixed their biggest problem, which is their offensive coaching staff. They nailed the draft, A+. Plus, from PFF and from, well, I gave him an A, but nailed the draft. They have Derek, a second season with Derek Carr. Derek Carr with the, mis the communications going to be better with the team and all of that. Alvin Kamara missed the first three games of last year. What is the problem? Like, what actually is the situation? Because you would think if, if you didn't like a situation, you would think the situation you wouldn't like would be in Atlanta where they're dealing with a tampering investigation, where Kirk Cousins' is, uh, Achilles is hanging on by thread, and oh, and they had a draft day debacle, where not only did they have the worst draft class graded by PFF and Warren Sharp, but they also drafted Michael Penix without telling Kirk Cousins, and now there's a huge quarterback controversy. So if there is a situation that you don't like, it seems like it should be in Atlanta, your slam dunk pick. It doesn't seem like it should be in New Orleans. New Orleans, again, New Orleans won nine games last year. Disappointing season. No one was happy about that. And I, and I hear this all the time in the comments. People say, James, those are a fake nine wins. That's a fake nine wins because the Saints had an easy schedule. Well, let me tell you this, my brother in Christ. If the Saints' nine wins are fake, what the hell are the Falcons' seven wins? If, the, if, you, think, if you think the Saints' nine wins are fake, I got bad news for you. Because the Falcons' schedule was even easier. Bottom line. And you could say, well, uh, they got Kirk Cousins. Kirk, 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 Kirk Cousins will fix things. Okay, well, go ahead and tell Kirk Cousins to, to wear the, the offensive play calls on this hand and the defensive play calls on this hand because they're going to need a whole lot of help defensively. They couldn't stop nobody and nothing. That, that's a big problem in Atlanta. So, you know, this narrative, I, I just don't understand. Well, I do understand. The, the, the narrative or the what I understand is that these big people in the media don't watch the games. They, I guarantee you, Colin has no clue what's going on with New Orleans. No clue what's going on with the roster. Because there's no way you can look at last year's roster and this year's roster and be like, yeah, I just don't like it. This year's roster, I think after the draft, I think it's fair to say, I really haven't thought about this past right now, but I think you could, 
make the argument that the roster we have going into the season in a, in a couple months here is better than where we were last year. Does that mean we're going to win more games than last year? No. Does that mean we're going to be like a better team? No. But as far as like just a roster and a situation going in, you got to feel better about about what we have going on. You know, you, you have to feel better about Derek Carr going into this season than last season because last season was his first year, you know, his first year in a transition going from Vegas to New Orleans. It, he was hurt twice. He, had, he was dealing with serious injuries. So you got to think that he should be in a better spot. Camara, same thing. He's not dealing with this, with a suspension this year. Sweet. Michael Thomas isn't on the team. The distraction, all, all of that. You've got the young players who stepped up last year get another year of experience. The Rashid Shaheeds and the AT Perrys, uh, Kendra Miller, you know, players, even on the back end, even on uh, with Elante Taylor and some of the younger guys in the secondary. Oh, and speaking of younger guys, you have Talise Fuaga, who total stud on the offensive line. You have... Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, total stud in the secondary, going to push the entire secondary. So roster-wise, I really don't know. Oh, and Chase Young's coming in to help another problem the Saints had, which, which was pass rush. So if anything, I think the Saints are a you know, kind of an unknown team with a very high ceiling. Would it surprise me if they won eight games? No. Would it surprise me if they won 10 games? No. I think the Saints are somewhere between an eight-win team and a 10-win team. The schedule more than likely will come out next week. More than likely will come out May 9th. Uh, so we'll do like a full schedule breakdown. But roster-wise, why are the Falcons better than the Saints, even if you throw in the coaching? To me, it looks very similar. Very, very similar. If anything, the I think the Saints are better because the Saints have a better defense. And at least we know what Dennis Allen is. Like, at least we know Dennis Allen is one of the best defensive coordinators in the NFL. We know that. What we're going to get out of Clint Kubiak, we don't know. Right. We don't, but we got to assume it's better than Pete Carmichael. But I'm totally fine. I am totally fine if you have Kirk Cousins, Drake London, and Bijan Robinson, and I have Derek Carr, Chris Olave, and Alvin Kamara. And I'm even more fine if you have the Falcons defense and I have the Saints defense. We're winning that. Like that, if you look at it that way and say, all right, here's the two situations. Here's everything. Here's what you got. And I've got the Saints playmakers and the Saints defense, and you're stuck with the Falcons playmakers and the Falcons defense. I'm feeling confident. Again, I'm not saying that the Saints are for sure going to win the division, but I think it's going to be pretty competitive. And I'll tell you this, I, I'm I'm not going to say 100%, but 100% the Saints will not be last in the NFC South. If the Saints are last in the NFC South, oh my God, I can't even imagine. There is no possible way we are under Carolina in the South. Carolina is a dumpster fire. Bryce Young is a dumpster fire. They're bringing on in a new head coach. David Tepper is way up, way, way, way out of his league as an owner slash GM slash president of football operations or whatever his actual job title is. He doesn't know what he's doing. Will the Buccaneers be average to decent? Yeah, okay. I could live with I could I could believe that. I think the Falcons, the Bucks, and the Saints will all be jumbled up, just like last year. I think it'll be a carbon copy repeat of last year. Do we really expect, do we really think Kirk Cousins is going to be that much better than Derek Carr this, this season? No, why, would, like, why would we think that with him coming off the injury and him being in a new area and you know, Kirk Cousins having to learn a new team and learn, learn a new system and he's got Michael Penix, you know, that whole thing to deal with. So I think it's crazy, but it, it's just more of the same. It's just more of there's no way uh, these guys are actually watching what's going on they're not watching the games. I mean, anytime you're reasoning, anytime your reasoning is, yeah, I don't like what's going on down there. All right, cool. I'll talk to you later. And eh, three and four are probably about the same. Eh, whatever. Like, it, you know, it's so obvious. So obvious with with Tampa, Carolina, and the Saints. With his breakdown of those, just obviously he has no clue uh, what's going on here. I, I bet I bet he couldn't even tell you who Atlanta's offensive coordinator is. He he knows Kirk Cousins is there. That's it. Uh, and and he knows Baker Mayfield's in in Tampa, and that's about it. So it's sad. This is ridiculous. There's no way. I would love 
for a sports book to put up the odds of will the Saints finish last in the NFC South? And I will take the no, and I would hammer it. Ladies and gentlemen, get on down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this. Not a lot of uh, description from Colin. Not a lot of analysis, but I think it's crazy. And this just goes to show, you know, the, the how how much the the media is just not aware of the NFC South and the New Orleans Saints. So get on down in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be down there. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.